Slovenia won, Serbia won, and that is how it ends in the matchup in Group C. Slovenia now stay in third place with two points. Serbia, late, 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 late goal by Luka Jovic to rescue a draw. It was going to be very difficult if they lost this game. Before we continue, ladies and gentlemen, there is a revolution happening in Kenya. The finance bill, it's a big deal in Kenya. This is something that's going to affect everyone. So all of you Kenyans... Guys, this thing affects everyone. So, yeah, don't be blind to it. Pay attention. Be a part of the revolution. Yeah, so, Slovenia and Serbia. This game was, um, uh, just to confess, today was a very difficult day in terms of watching games because of everything that was happening. Um, But I managed to catch a bit of the first half and a bit of the second half. I got both goals, luckily. And there are just some trends that I saw with both teams that I just wanted to touch on. First of all, Slovenia named an unchanged side. Uh, for Serbia, they ended up starting Mladenovic, Ilic, and Tadic behind the two big men of Lahovic and Mitrovic. And uh, Kostic is actually out for the rest of the tournament. He was injured in the last game. Um, going to this tournament as well, uh, something to note is that Slovenia had only failed to score in one of the last 21 fixtures. So they are just like, they have to get the, uh, the ball in the back of the net. Early trends that I saw in the game, the fullbacks for Slovenia, particularly, I need to get their names right, so I'll be looking a lot at my phone. Um, Kanichik and Yanza, they were getting up so much. And that is, they're allowed to do that because Cherin and El- Elchnik, the two central midfielders, they play with a 4-4-2 really, really cover for the fullbacks when they go up. Slovenia's strength is in their fullbacks. They really push high up. They play with two strikers, Sheshko and Spora up front. So they need as much width as possible, cross the ball as much as possible for the big man. The good thing with having Sheshko there, he can play as a big man. He can also fall back. He's good. He can shoot from outside. He can play one, two touches. He's a runner. He's very athletic. So he allows you to play a 4-4-2, but in essence, he can literally play in midfield, you know. Um, But he's a striker. So, yeah. I, I think Slovenia's fullbacks really caused problems for Serbia early on. Serbia were really struggling to um, get control of them. And then Cherin, whenever he got a chance, he would just go in front. They really pressed high as well. They created two big chances within the first eight minutes of the game. Uh, Nezda Sherin with the f- early chance in the beginning, uh, again from a press, forced a mistake, and they had a shot within uh, after five minutes. After seven minutes, Mlaka on the light on the on the right side, Mlaka. On the right side, um, had an opportunity. Again, high press, they win the ball. The ball comes to him on the right side um, of the field and he has a volley that is saved by... Uh, who's the keeper? This is Sabia by Rajkovic. Um, yeah, again, as I said, the early trends is that Slovenia were really, really pressing high. The thing with Sabia is they had to play with a bit more of desperation because they knew if they lose this game, It'd be very hard for them. So they I, they sort of slowly got into the game. Uh, Tadic, finally, what really got them into the game is the movement of Tadic, I, to be fair. Because, you know, when you have those two big men up front, it's hard. You're asking people who are used to playing as their main as the main strikers in their clubs to actually come and play as uh, false nines and false whatever, right? So Tadic really allowed them in the rare moments that they drop or they would go wide, Tadic is covering those spaces. His movement is what really created um, time and space for the two up front. So, yeah, I believe having Tadic in the, in the starting lineup was, was a good call. That seven minute, Elchnik uh, had a great shot off the post. He had, um, yeah, it was some great dribbling from, from him. And then, yeah, when once he hit the post, it came back. Sheshko had a very good chance and he shot it over the bar. Like, it was such a weird way of like it was such a weird game in in that Slovenia were when they were attacking they were attacking really well then when Serbia get momentum they attack for a while and Slovenia forget to defend I mean they are not playing as well and then now it comes back to Slovenia so it was like a back and forth sort of thing but back and forth in in like five minute spells right or six to seven minute spells something like that so yeah second half it got a go a lot closer um and chances were now you can really tell like how tense people were uh Mitrovic just shooting over the bar um I think Vlaovic as well had a chance uh sorry Mitrovic had a second chance that header over the bar and um Ilicic as well uh, Ilic had a good shot man who had come on uh, started in place of Kostic and then it was I think in the 69th minute that Slovenia finally got the first goal again 
um, the fullback, Kanichik, Kanichnik, Kanichnik. So Serbia lose the ball. I believe it was one of the players that came on from for Serbia. Uh, the player who had come on from Mladenovic, it was Gacinovic. Gacinovic had just come on on the right side, and I don't know what he was trying to play. Then Kanichnik wins the ball. Um, he does really well to beat the first man, and then squares it to the wing. So he's a right winger, squares the ball all the way, like just a, a ground pass all the way to the left wing. The left winger is coming up. Uh, he cuts back in because he's right-footed, and he's, he's crossing. The, I, I don't know how Sheshko and all those guys missed the ball in the middle of the park. He just kept running, and the ball just falls to him. He just side-foots it, back of the net. Slovenia are one nil up, and at this point now, the pressure is on. The pressure is on because Serbia cannot afford to lose this game. Um, were there any changes that they made? Yes, they removed Stojanovic and brought in Vabic. So they removed a midfielder, a defender, and brought in a midfielder. And they also removed. Uh, 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 uh. So they made a few changes actually. So then they removed um, Zivkovic and brought in Bamanchevic again, a forward for a midfielder. And then they took out. Tadic and brought in Samadic, a midfielder. So now they're really just going like, yes, we have a focal man, but let's have a bit more movement in the mid midfield. The one thing about Serbia is when they have the two big men up front, there is lack of mobility up front. There is lack of mobility in midfield because the two big men are just trying to, you know, <laughs> do something up front. Um, then in the 71st, 72nd second minute, Mitrovic had a great, great chance. Uh, the ball came in the crew, like, came in as a cross you can see him just holding a defender off and he just said foot volleys it like a half volley the ball crashes off of the bar like it was just so desperate like you could see they were trying you could see like these guys again Mitrovic has paid 63 was it 63 no he has scored 63 or something 60 something it's either cups or goals I can't remember but he's the rate at which he's scoring goals for his national team is much faster than Ronaldo and Messi so that's just saying something like this is their main man you know then I Again, last minute goal going into like it was 90 plus five, it was five minutes added, it was five minutes and 30 seconds, like something crazy like that. Cross comes in, Connor McNamara is a commentator, is like, Oh, can they get a chance? This is their chance, the final chance to do something. The cross comes in, Jovic, who had just come on, Luka Jovic had just come on, well, not just, but he had come on for Vlahovic, then gets his head on the ball and buries it to the bottom corner to make it 1 1. And that was, and that is how the game ended. Jovic, last two games, has come on and actually changed the game. Last game, it was Jovic and Tadic. This game, it was Jovic, came on, scored the winner. The last game, he really, really just changed the game for Serbia against England. And I don't know. I don't know if you just keep starting Vlahovic, Vlahovic and Mitrovic and keep... The thing is, you have to start with one. I don't believe... This thing of starting with both of them, I guess they were a bit unlucky today. They hit the post a few times and stuff, but... I believe you have to start with one of them, right? And then someone like Jovic still gives you very good presence off the bench. The problem is now if you start with one, that means Mitrovic, Mitrovic will definitely start. Vlahovic will probably on the bench and he'll be the first sub and Jovic won't get a chance. So, yeah, it's tricky. They have three very good strikers. Um, but all in all, this was a valuable point for Sabia. They really rescued a big point. So they're going to the next game, not too much pressure. They, they had never lost two games, the first two games in a row. Their streak continues, and they go into the last game against uh, Denmark, knowing that if they win, they qualify to the round of 16. And yeah, that is how the game ended. 1-1, Slovenia versus Serbia.